Rub up your engines! Well, looks like GM's been up to some shenanigans. They say, oh yeah, you know, American company, bail us out, bail us out. They get bailout money. And what do they do? They move their jobs to Mexico. Listen to this. GM's Factory Zero Detroit Hammond Track Plant employs 2,162 employees. But GM's Silo Plant in Mexico is 6,500 workers. And it's Ramos Arispe Plant in Mexico is 5,600 employees. GM has pledged to build only EVs at Ramos beginning this year. But where the company's problem ridden EV compact SUVs are manufactured. Okay, so they're moving their production to Mexico and they're having problems with them. Isn't that a shocker? They take the bailout money from the government and then they move their jobs down to Mexico. And then they have quality problems. Oh, who couldn't foresee that? Oh, let's go to Mexico. The land of quality manufacturing. That'll be great. And we'll make EVs there. I mean, I do have to say, at least it won't affect me personally because I'm never going to buy one of their products anyways. I'm certainly not going to buy an EV anything. So, <laughs> but if you are, I would advise not buying a GM electric vehicle made in Mexico. And here's an interesting one. Two years ago, in July 2022, the administration of Michigan, Whitmer there, female governor, right? She removed a requirement that GM maintain a minimum of 4,000 jobs at their rent center. They said, oh, yeah, you got to keep these here to get our government money. Well, guess what? As of this moment, their own website lists 857 employees that work at that rent center. Originally, they said you got to have at least 4,000, but then uh, two years ago, they said, oh, no, you don't have to. Now there's hardly anybody there, right? Even the jobs are going down to Mexico, right? It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. And these aren't manufacturing jobs. These are white collar jobs, right? They're going away too. They got their money and they ran away to Mexico. So much for GM. Their quality's garbage anyways. They can go down to Mexico as far as I'm concerned. I'm not going to buy anything they make anyway. And if you're smart, you won't either. They're trying to pretend they're a U.S. company, right? But by American, they mean North America, which includes Mexico. <laughs> That's how they get away with a bunch of this crap. Yeah, if the batteries are made in Mexico, it counts as American, so we get a tax break, blah, blah, blah. GM's getting a tax break, but they're building the stuff in Mexico where they're not really paying any taxes. Yeah, makes a lot of sense, people, doesn't it? Why did we bail them out? Well, because they're in bed with the politicians. What do you think? Now, here's some bad news. It might sound like good news, but it's actually bad news. Tesla's gigapress has led to systemic industry change, and now EVs will cost less to build than ICE vehicles by 2027. Okay, he's got the giant gigapress, and instead of spending hours and hours making the big frame and everything on a car, this is all done with one press. It's yet a cheaper way to make cars. Yes, it can make them cheaper to make, but then they become disposable cars. You might not think about it, but I'm a mechanic, so I think about it, right? Especially Teslas. Teslas get in even small wrecks, they're often total. Well, if the majority of your car is made one giant pressed piece, when it breaks, the car is garbage, right? What are you going to do? Buy that whole piece? That's most of the car, right? So what will happen is you'll have a Tesla or any other car that's made with a gigapress. It gets in a minor wreck. That part gets bent. They'll total the car. And then guess what happens? Up go the insurance rates because they'll say, hey, these things are totaled easy. The Tesla insurance rates are already high. And if other manufacturers follow along the lines of this and make their cars with their own gigapresses, when you get in a wreck, planned obsolescence, car's gone, then you got to buy another one. Of course, the car manufacturers love this for two reasons. If they can make them cheaper, it saves them money. And if your car gets in a wreck and it's totaled, they love it because then you got to buy a new car, right? Planned obsolescence up the wazoo. So I say no to the gigapresses of the world. They're making them cheaper and they're making them so there's more planned obsolescence and a wreck will destroy them. Then you got to get another car and you can't even fix it. Well, I'm laughing my hiney out now because Ford just got a new patent and they say that the future Ford electric vehicles may get a pre-owned purchase advisory system. Well, they know nobody wants to buy the used ones, so they're trying to make it. There. How can we force people to buy used ones? And they claim they're going to have the system where, oh, it'll show you how much battery life is left. La, 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 right? They have a patent here that's called System and Method for Purchase Advisor for Pre-Owned Battery Electric Vehicles, BEVs. I don't believe one bit of this horse manure because I check out cars for people all the time. I've been doing it for over 50 years. I go to a dealer, right? And they bring me a car. Customers thinking about buying. These are certified pre-owned cars, right? You know what that means? That means nothing. <laughs> I was at a Toyota dealer. I was checking out a certified pre-owned one, right? The oil wasn't even on the dipstick, right? And they said, oh, well, we haven't serviced it yet. To me, that was great. 
they hadn't serviced it yet, even though it was a certified pre-owned, right? Because if they would have serviced it, I would have seen it was full of oil and I wouldn't have thought anything. But the idiots hadn't serviced it yet. So it was low on oil, means it burns oil. I told the customer, don't buy that car under any situations. Toyota should never burn oil. This one's burning oil, it's a used car. So don't buy it. And then they told, don't worry, we'll change the oil. <laughs> And I told the customer, I said, tell them this, tell them it's too late. The engine's already worn. You could change the oil, but it's burning oil and it will continue to because the previous owner didn't maintain it. And you fools should have changed the oil before the mechanic checked it out. And I wouldn't have noticed. I'd check the oil and it's clear and everything. I'd say, oh good, it's taken care of, right? But they didn't even bother. So this pre-owned nonsense certification certified used car is a line of horse manure it's just another label to try to sucker you into buying a used car to deal at an inflated price like guess ford's trying to make some computer program to show you how great their car is that they're selling you you know more horse manure from ford motor company well i've warned people in the past do not buy an eco diesel in jeep products or any chrysler product for that matter because those eco diesel v6s are what they're italian engines hey we make a the diesel right you want a diesel at least have the germans make it you know they invented it rudolf diesel after all well as you can see in this picture it was a coked up pile of crap it's all burnt carbon and all that now eric from i do cars channel he's tore them down and he pretty much said there's all kinds of shavings inside i suspect i'm into something he says all these eco diesels have similar problems with the bottom end going out bearings let loose the engines explode. I had a customer in Rhode Island. He went through two of those engines. The hilarious thing was the first one blew. They gave him a second one under warranty. And as soon as he got home, oil was leaking out of it. <laughs> because it wasn't even a new engine. They had to rebuild one of their old ones. They gave him a rebuilt one. And it was already leaking oil. Let me tell you, you do not want to buy an Italian diesel engine here in the United States. Their quality is garbage. And it's kind of disgusting because Fiat bought the company. Hey, let's put Italian diesels. They're great engines right no they aren't they're only piles of junk so don't go out and buy one unless you want to, have to spend a lot of time rebuilding the engine over and over again as it falls apart because they're made like garbage kb 68.99 says i replaced the muffler on my rav4 and i'm getting worse gas mileage two months ago the muffler fell off to rust on 07 rav4 my friend welded a muffler that came off a 90s jeep grand cherokee does a different model affect the gas mileage 23 on a freeway and i used to get 20 six help okay yeah it does make a difference put the right muffler on that muffler was made for a v8 engine put on a toyota muffler you can get them aftermarket on amazon cheap enough why did y'all well done grand cherokee v8 muffler on i mean all kinds of stuff can go wrong put the right muffler on it will affect it especially on 07 that's got oxygen sensors on it catalytic converter all that stuff's going to be affected if you put a muffler that's got too much restriction from a big old v8 jeep that's the miles says where is my crankshaft position sensor i have a crankshaft position sensor code on my 2011 acura tsx four cylinder people say it's by the crankshaft but i can't see it anywhere there hell most of the cars are like yours they're new they're different what the crankshaft position sensor shows is it's where the engine bolts to the transmission and in your case you jack up the car if you go under the car you'll see the crankshaft position sensor is just to the side of the oil filter it goes into the engine right it's not that hard to get to but you do have to jack it up in here to get to it right and you might have to take a bunch of plastic crap on the bottom of the car off to get to it if it's still there on an older car like that but that's where they hide them because most of them these days they measure the flywheel going on so they're between the engine and the transmission so they can measure the flywheel back in the day they used to put them on the front of the engine where the crankshaft pulley is but now they're on the back side instead and that's why you got confused most cars are that way now most most of them measure the flywheel and they're on the engine between the engine and the transmission and they measure that they don't measure the front of the crank they measure the back of the crank and they all change that way just about now this guy's got a very interesting video this is a picture inside a car tire he put a GoPro inside a car tire and filmed what actually happened then he put these little balance beads so you can see the forces going around it's quite fascinating it's called warped perception that's the YouTube channel and 
And the video is called GoPro Inside a Car Tire. Watch it. It's fascinating because you get to see the forces as they go over bumps and it flexes and how the pressure in the sidewall goes as they're driving it around. I got to say, you know, I've never seen the inside of a tire going down the road and that really gives you an idea. Everybody takes their tires for granted, right? Realize that 90 something percent of your ride and suspension is the tires flexing. They absorb an awful lot of pressure. And if you watch this video, let me tell you something and you look at your tire, you see the tread is going away. You're going to go buy another set of tires because you realize all the stress when you're cornering and going on a highway. It's a really interesting video. You should watch it. Warped Perception is the YouTube channel. I got to say, it's fascinating stuff. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.